I am happy in introducing the resource person of the next session, Professor Dr. Valentino Del Corte, the full full time professor of business management at Federico University of Naples. She had her uh, degree in business economics at Federico University of Naples and PhD in business management at uh, Kofoskori University Venice and a visiting scholar at Ohio State University. She is a full time professor at uh, Federico University of Naples. Naples and previously appointed as associate professor and a research fellow of business management in the same university. She teaches tourist business management, strategic management and marketing policies, management of cultural heritage and revenue management at Federico II University of Naples. She made teaching and seminar at Louis Guido Corley University, CISET of Venice, Sanio University and Luspeo University. She has also been in teaching and research activities and as acting as visiting professor at Serum Business School, Ravensburg, University of Cooperative Education, Ohio State University, and Utah University. She is also author of numerous publications in national and international academic journals such as Tourism Management, Synergy, International Journal of Quality and Service. Sciences, International Journal of Leisure and Tourism Marketing, Corp Corporate Ownership and Control, European Journal of Innovation Management. She is author of, she has published various books in uh, EGA, CEDAM, as well as chap she has uh, given chapters in edited books by Elgar and Totta Miguel. She has participated in national and international conferences as Strategic Management Society Annual Meeting. Academy of Management Annual Meeting, Italian Academy of Ma Management Annual Meeting, and various other conferences. She is responsible for Eras Erasmus Project as a relationship promoter in various uh, foreign universities, including Catholic University of Avilia, Spain, University Lille from uh, Lyon, France, University of Derby in UK, Baden Wittenberg Co Cooperative State University from Germany. Polytechnic Institute of Vienna du Castello from Portugal and University from La Regio from Spain. It is an immense pleasure in lending the ears to the elite personality professor Dr. Valentina for her uh, invited lecture on the new challenges for innovation in tourism between digitalization and sustainability. Professor, the dice is yours. Welcome, ma'am. I'm really glad and honored for uh, having been invited to this inter very interesting meeting. Uh, what I would like to focus today is uh, uh, on, on the role of digitalization in the development of small and medium enterprises, uh, considering also the impact of the pandemic uh, uh, on all activities that regard mainly uh, both manufacturing and service industries uh, nowadays, uh, but with a special focus on small and medium enterprises, because these are considered to be a category uh, that is particularly um, weak or some way vulnerable to the changes, especially when the changes are very abrupt and sudden, uh, like those that we have lived in these uh, months. And so, um, there, but there are some very interesting uh, things I would like to point out, also taking you some cases, because all over the world, apart from United States, we have a lot of small and medium enterprises in our in our uh, industrial panorama and our panorama view. And so it is very important to take into account what, uh, what can be the real challenges for this kind of firms. Now I try to, to share my screen some premises because small and medium enterprises um, of course are, are particularly involved when there are turbulent and are the times and in particular also the changes that are, that are pushed by um, uh, information and communication technologies um, because these make all the ways uh, knowledge and information flow uh, between customers between the firms and the customers and the, all the, the networks of relationships um, 
in the different business places. Uh, but there are some um, uh, aspects that uh, have to be considered because uh, in ICT development, uh, it is sometimes very hard for small and medium enterprises uh, to uh, carry out specific investments of that, especially at an individual level. Now, uh, on the other side, uh, we have um, looked at a, a huge growth of digital transformation. Uh, because if, if you consider that 75% of companies, uh, of course, uh, now today have a uh, DX strategy and the 60% have undergone and have created some new business models on that, um, you know, uh, stream and that 56% of CEOs say they, they, the digital improvements have led to increased revenues and uh, in some way to uh, development of the business of their uh, of the firm uh, on the other side, uh, we can tell that um, there is, of course, a big, a huge impact also on a customer experience because two thirds of a company's uh, competitive hedge comes from its customer's experience. And uh, digitalization has helped a lot the re direct relationship between the firm and its customers. Um, of course, uh, this, is, this can be strange because, uh, especially in service industry, uh, I also, uh, I am studying a lot also tourism industry, as, as, you, as you said when you were explaining my profile. But what I can tell you, we have uh, a double soul in this, um, in this sector, for example, because you have on a side uh, a very um, attentive, uh, experience-based approach uh, because um, customers want to, to leave specific experiences, uh, want to leave experience, um, want to leave the places where they go, uh, they want to taste everything that regards the place. On the other side, um, there is the importance of the ICT, but ICT becomes a vehicle to make even the experience stronger, uh, to, to share the experience very quickly. Uh, therefore, uh, while in the past there was a kind of a distance between the, the what we called the induced level of marketing and the uh, organic one, because at the induced level of marketing, we used to speak about the traditional four P's of the marketing. So all the actions that were aimed to convince the customer to choose the service or to choose the product. And then in the organic phase, there was the provision phase where the marketing continued uh, for customer satisfaction. Now there is a kind of overlapping activity between these two. Uh, so people experience the product and experience even the manufacturing product in terms of the services and the facilities that it can provide. And at the same, in, in the same time expresses its satisfaction or dissatisfaction and shares it with the others. So the two levels, the induced one and the organic one are like over overlapped. And there is a, so there is a complex activity that is made of all this stuff that influences a lot what is called the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> perception uh, of, the car, of, of, of the product and of its quality and of the service. So therefore, <clears throat> the, the link between the customer and technology is becoming, uh, is intensifying and it's becoming higher and higher and 92% of customers today are satisfied using live chat services for higher customer satisfaction. Uh, they use mobile devices to connect with brands and uh, they, they, they also search products online before going on a physical store. So habits, you know, the, the, the customs are really changing a lot. Of course, digital transformation means a lot, therefore, because it means new business models. It means new ways of thinking. It means um, new way of approaching. And this, uh, we, we got to this, uh, this view uh, through um, uh, a process that took place uh, for several years. But especially in the latest five years, there has been this really important transformation of the concept of digital transformation and of its implications on firms, business models and ways of operating. Uh, I uh, try to point out 
and we are writing a paper with a colleague of mine that I would like also to involve in this conference is Giovanna de Gaudio. We are working a lot together and uh, we made a kind of uh, analysis of the main levels for for digital transformation because first of all there is a level of course which is the digital awareness the awareness of the importance of the the um, you know of, of digital tools uh, in firms business operations on the other side then there is the environment so uh, looking for the main tools that can be really helpful for the firm then there is another step which is very very important which is digital collaboration and this is extremely strategic for small and medium enterprises. And you know why? Because, of course, in many situations, the small and medium enterprises by themselves cannot carry out some particular digital investments. But if they are a network, this can work. And I will show you a couple of examples in Italy that are really, really successful from this point of view. If this happens, then we can get to level four, which is digital transformation. Of course, we have so different aspects to take into account because uh, digital transformation, if we apply it to business models, it, it, it recalls different aspects because there are some organizational changes, financial aspects to take into account because, of course, I can make the investments if I have the, the right financial resources with the appropriate use of technologies. But there is a very important implication that we can consider and scientifically is very important, which is the changes in value creation. So what become the main item for value creation? First of all, so are the items for value creation changing in this outline? And secondly, what do they, which kind of value they produce? And how then is, is this value caught in the organization? So there are a lot of steps to consider. Therefore, the digital transformation topic cannot be dealt just by itself. I mean, it necessarily has to be connected with the social and relational dimensions of digital transformation. Uh, social and relational dimensions are extremely important, as I told you, because uh, I'm also starting a lot of process between small and medium enterprises, which is called competition strategies, the so-called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Wright. Firms that are huge, fierce competitors that on some planes become cooperators. And this is typical in small and medium enterprises approaches, especially the most successful ones. I mean, they are really aware of the fact that if in some cases, for some projects, for some specific initiatives, they cooperate with their main competitors, this can be really successful for them. And they do it. So this is very important. So I would like to, to express my theory from this point of view. Uh, a model that has been uh, developed by Bauer 2017, uh, the innovation management theory that takes into account on site all that regards the open innovation approach and the possibility of operating in innovative ecosystems. And this is very, very important because in this case, if we operate with an open innovation approach, within an innovative ecosystem, then there can be a real business model innovation. This, of course, has an impact on value. And the innovation can be either disruptive or incremental. It depends. Or they can be both. But so this process, strategic aware process, can really bring the firm to a higher level of competitiveness. Now, from this point of view, there is my, my framework, my theoretical framework, the theoretical framework that I propose is a very complex one. It's very complex because I've been thinking about it really for a long time. And I can see that there are some streams of research that necessarily interact and have to take into account. Well, first of all, the cultural stream, because we were talking about possible 
uh, innovative ecosystems, the cooperation. But first of all, this cooperation not, does not necessarily have to take place in the same place. I mean, the firms involved in the cooperation can be very far from each other, can be in Italy and in India, can be in India and United States. I mean, we have to, to think about an open approach where there can be some kind of specialization of somebody somewhere in the world that really fits with your needs and vice versa, and then something new can, can, be, can start. But of course, this means capability stream because the main reasons why firms can decide to go together for a joint high tech process, for example, digital transformation process is the fact that they can have complementary capabilities. I know I have very strategic resources. This is the resource based approach. I am a supporter of resource based approach. So I have very, very strong in some resources and capabilities, but I know that in order to implement some kind of digital transformation, I think is very important for my business. I do need some other competencies I do not have. And so this kind of complementarity fosters cooperation between partners, potential partners, and of course, the corporate entrepreneurial stream, because in this case, as you know, small and medium enterprises are the more entrepreneurial ones they are less obliged to the classical schemes of the public companies so less bureaucracy so there is a um, uh, a quicker entrepreneurial soul moving and this this aspect put together can really favor uh innovation innovation that is not just of course product innovation or process innovation or both it's not just marketing innovation, it's also organizational. I mean, it's an overall innovation process that has to involve all the single levels of the organization. But this means that there is also a cultural activity because all the people in the organization have to be ready to do this. Therefore, what do we draw from the uh, COVID 2019 experience? Uh, first of all, COVID has put us in front of the necessity of digital transformation. And of course, has also meant a kind of accelerator for certain processes to, to go towards the creation of digital ecosystems. But think about also the scientific communities as we are. We have produced a lot of initiatives more than the past. We have been by far more productive in writing. I mean, the pandemic has meant a, a huge, huge increase in scientific productivity. So this shows what, what is outside. Now, we made a, uh, I, I make now two examples I would like to submit to you. One is in a very traditional industry in Italy, but also famous, it's the wine industry, because the made in Italy wine is considered to be very precious, is appreciated all over the world, high quality wine, comparing with the French wine. And this, 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 this sector is uh, mainly based on firms that are really uh, working on local traditions because it's very very close to the territory it's very very close to the you know the um viticultures uh to all the the agricultural aspects so it's a way to valorize local territory but in this very very traditional industry we noticed how important is digitalization and what it can really how it can really help the firms in this industry. And so we try to find out some main variables that uh, can help us defining innovation in diff from different points of view and find found some proxies for them. And notice that the most important uh, winery product firms 
are uh, putting in place uh, uh, an overall innovation process, uh, which is not only that not only concerns, for example, the application of uh, uh, digital tools in the manufacturing process to have a, a better quality product or um, even in marketing uh, in order to get to foreign countries more easily, or uh, but there are two main aspects they are working a lot on that are very, very important and successful. And these are the uh, external knowledge sources. I mean, the way they interact with other actors in the territory uh, to valorize the territorial identity. And, uh, and therefore also the systemic innovation, uh, which means the exchange of know-how, the exchange of knowledge, um, the acquisition of technology through cooperation agreement and the development of co-joint products also with other firms in the agricultural sector. Now, we made um, so this, uh, uh, this research with a group of researchers in my university and uh, in Campania region. Uh, we took the main, you know, the most important winery um, firms uh, all over uh, province of uh, the Chamber of Commerce and made the pilot survey using different methods. And so these were the main results that we uh, had in this, in this case, uh, where I can tell you that there was uh, an unbelievable um result because uh, of course uh, it came out that the most um outstanding brands were those where really the digital transformation had helped a lot the new business concepts and new business models now um so this shows that um uh the, the innovation practices in this case are both technical change and renovation of knowledge acquisition uh, in a sector that can be considered as traditional. And those firms that implement innovation can be de facto considered big innovators in this, in this sector. Another sector which is typical in my country is uh, the digital transformation in the cultural sector. And cultural sector means all museums, all heritage sites, you know that in Italy we have the highest percentage of the uh, patrimony, uh, cultural patrimony uh, all over the world. And um, what we are doing now is really studying any kind of possible innovation within this kind of sector. And of course, uh, Campania region where I live is uh, uh, an area of huge concentration uh, of these these uh, resources, I think that we have uh, Pompeii, Ercolano, the, the major heritage sites in the world. We have very, very important museums that are famous all over the world. And so there is a mixture of uh, cal uh, um, cultural uh, aspects together with also uh, naturalistic aspects because we, we have in the same gulf, the islands of Capri, Ischia, uh, Sorrento Peninsula, Malfitan Coast. So my region is considered to be one of the most important from a tourist point of view. And it's full really of uh, cultural resources. Now, uh, what we are trying to see, what are the, the main tools to valorize the cultural resources? Well, we as a university made up uh, um, a district, a cultural district that was called Data Bank, not only for the conservation valorization of cultural resources, but also uh, to favor smart innovation within our main uh, cultural resources. And uh, we developed wonderful things. Uh, we even uh, made up a show uh, where there was the sculpture in Italy in the latest um, 19th century, beginning of 2000, and uh, with a virtual way of uh, looking at the different stages, uh, how they were made, the explanation of the uh, main motives that led the artist to build the sculpture in a certain way, the possibility of moving the stature on a, on a screen, 
and on getting all the information on it on that and that has been a real real um uh, success uh if you think that this show was a uh, located uh, close to uh, Cristo Velato, which is one of the main attractive factors in Naples for the historical you know, um, uh, attractions. And there was the same number of uh, visitors. So great, great success from this point of view. So we built up a platform to share the knowledge of all these resources that we have and to create some working on two, two things, trying to create whatever could really make the cultural resource live. And on the other side, to put the resources in a network, like a sort of ecosystem. And now we are applying this approach to Federico II University, uh, main patrimony, because we have a lot of uh, historical resources in, in Federico II. And now we are doing this so I will invite you to visit our, our sites in Naples, to come to Naples and to enjoy with us all these things that we are doing. Of course, this means to get working together, universities, research centers, big companies, small and medium enterprises, cultural heritage that has to interact with tourism sector, that has to interact with commercial activities. Uh, there is an interaction between local communities, tourists, uh, also the residents, and also the most disadvantageous classes in the, among the residents, because we involve them a lot. So, what are the conclusions of this short speech I am really glad and honored to have with you? That the digital transformation is an accelerator, can be an important accelerator for innovation and for new business models. Uh, it, puts out a lot of new opportunities for firms, but we have to, I think, develop a diverse thinking. We need to think about new, new things, uh, new ways of thinking, new ways of approaching. And from this kind of view, I am really, really sure that intercultural interactions can really help us a lot. I belong to different research projects people coming from different areas of the world. And this is the huge, huge value of the research I'm making, because I, I really believe that the intercultural interactions can really help us a lot to adopt any kind of transformation. And from this point of view, we that study with our theories can really help firms to better develop the way they are managed. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. It was very interesting to learn about the theoretical framework of innovation management theory and wholesome innovation in organizational level. And uh, we were able to understand the various dimensions of digital transformation and uh, your views on uh, digital transformation in economical scale and also in the uh, part of cultural and heritage scale. Uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, put up a question like, uh, how long do you think that this digital transformation will take time uh, to reach or make a uh, very vital impact on econ economy of any uh, SME? Uh, I think, of course, uh... Uh -huh. It really requires some time, but I think that the time will be shorter than we expected. Because uh, firms, um, they decide to stay on the market. They decide to face even difficult products are ready, are more, uh, you know, receptive about changes. And so this is a very important time. Because I think that uh, this period will show that the best, uh, firms will be really able to be also very fast in this kind of transformation. I'm rather positive from this point of view. I can tell you that in a couple of years we, we will see a lot of new things. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, like, thank you, ma'am. As you said, uh, this COVID has uh, uh, made the or uh, fastened the uh, digital transformation uh, era. Do you think that is there any other? Uh, kick or any other factor which is uh, required to still further foster this uh, transformation? 
Uh, I think there is a very important role that is played also by uh, uh, institutions. Because especially for small and medium enterprises, if the institutions are close to uh, the needs of the firms, and then the university can play a big role as a facilitator. Now, in this case, we have a, a successful system between institutions, firms, and universities. If this system works, I think it can really give results. But the institutions have a huge responsibility right now. The states, the regions, they do have to uh, put in a clear way the opportunities for the firms for recovery quite quickly and clearly and give access to funds and everything. If this happens, with the help of universities, because I think also another very important thing is that the role of university has changed over time. If you think about the latest five years, I think universities all over the world, because I can see this also in my interactions with other colleagues as you. I mean, we as universities are much more closer to the real world. So if also the institutions do their role, then the ecosystem is, is done. But every, everybody, every actor has to play its role in the right way. So institution or maybe politicians, unfortunately, also have a role in this. Thank you, ma'am. So let us let us conclude that uh, each stakeholders have a vital role to play in this uh, digital transformation era. Yes. Thank you, you Paula Kumar sir, and thank you, Valentina, ma'am.